Tonight's Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week is brought to you by Queen City Audio, Video, and Appliances, your outdoor kitchen and tailgate headquarters. And by Acosta Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, household name for quality and trust. Just about showtime here at Huff High School. Biggest game in the area. Undefeated West Charlotte at Huff. The Huskies have won five consecutive games since losing their opener against Burns, a state contender in the, the state of South Carolina. And the Huskies with that big inflatable mascot just about to take the field for the first time tonight. Reggie Walker, Darren Vaught, happy to have you with us, Reg. You can just feel it, man. The energy in here is uh, it's big time. This feels like we're getting later and later into the season, and every game is important from here on out. It's a lot less hot, right? It's not quite as hot as it is earlier in the year. It's starting to cool down. It's that time of the season. The playoffs are really, really close by, right? So that time frame is coming. And the best part about this, Darren, there's not going to be many, if any, empty seats in this house tonight. You see that great shot. Our crew does an excellent job. There's some empty seats over there on that West Charlotte side now. The band is still walking in. There are some fans and other patrons behind them as well. So that side of the stadium will likely be full by the time we get midway through the first quarter. And this side, the home side, if you will, for Huff, already packed. The, Char the West Charlotte team, the visitors, donning their hot pink pants and numerals on these away uniforms. October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so they get a different look. Yeah, but one thing that's not going to change, that speed on defense and the ability to make explosive plays by the quarterback, Katie Smith. We'll be seeing flashes of pink and white throughout the night. There another look at Trey Blakeney, the signal caller for the Huskies. First season beginning with game one in that role as the starter at QB, as you mentioned. And Deshaun Baker, their head coach, when we spoke to him earlier this week, raved about the progress of Blakeney and how far he's come since that first game. Yeah, he just talked about how they were able to get it to start slowing down for him, and, and that's the big key. And, and between Coach Baker and the quarterback's coach, Mike Tarver, who I mentioned earlier, they've done an excellent job sort of managing his development and giving him things when he's ready for them, but also pushing him to develop and grow as a player, and he's really done that. West Charlotte won the coin toss and deferred, so they will kick to Huff to begin the contest. Kickoff brought to you by Queen City Audio, Video and Appliances, where Outdoor Kitchen and Tailgate Headquarters. Tees it up for West Charlotte. Number seven, Sean Brady, number 20, Jeremiah Zone. Dang Chinquayets, the junior kicker, to boot it away for the Lions. Lights are on. And everybody's home in this one. That is it. Big time matchup by everyone's regard. Two of the top five teams in the area. And it's underway. Chinquayetch squibs it. And it's pulled in, returnable. And it'll be Huff beginning with possession at their own 23. Demetrius Rivers on the tackle on special teams there for West Charlotte. If you're Huff, obviously you want to get off to a good start, but I think the main thing is you want to get against this fast defense. You want to make sure that Trey Blakeney is able to identify and get the ball to the right spots. But most importantly, he needs some early completions to make sure that confidence level is high. So Blakeney out to lead the offense. Shotgun set. He's joined by Will Jones in the backfield. Hard fake and whistles. False start on the offense. And not a or delay of game, rather, as the clock got down to zero. And this is what you can't do, right? Against this defense, you don't want to be in a bunch of, in this case, it's a first and extra long, right? But you don't want to be in a bunch of second and third and longs against this fast-flowing, 
group of linebackers and this defense that's full of speed because they will absolutely come after you and force you to check the ball down and get it out quickly. Dyson and CISO, not in motion there, but late to figure out where he was going. He's in the slot on that far side. Jacob Dossey, the man in motion, a play fake, and flags come oh, out. That one is a false start. So consecutive penalties before Huff has even gotten a playoff to begin their game. Now you're looking at a first and 20. Just really makes you predictable offensively right here. You, percentages are more than 85% that you're going to throw the football here because you're staring at a first and 20. Blakeney with Will Jones, Jason, and CISO both with him in the backfield. That screams to me that this may be a max protection type situation so that they can push the ball down the field. Jones splits out to that left side. Proves to be the lead blocker on a give to Anciso. He's brought down up the middle after a game of a handful. Anciso, the ball carrier for this West Charlotte defense, particularly up front, not the biggest group, especially in that front seven, but these linebackers all can run, and they all show up and are really, really good tacklers. And as I said, they show up in a bad mood. Ashton Hampton, now the receiver up top of your screen, out wide for Huff on second and 15. Hampton's a guy to keep an eye on, one of their leading receivers. Blakeney back to pass, quick give, Jones, ditches an open field tackle, jukes outside, past the 30, then the 35 as he stumbles down. And that will make it awfully close on third down here, Reggie. Yeah, nice job here by Blakeney getting the football out, finding his security blanket, his outlet there, getting it out in the flat, and then make a guy miss. And, and that's going to be a key for West Charlotte in this game. Carmichael that time missed that tackle. It's a handoff on third and three, and it's not going to be enough for the Huskies. This defense, again, it's not the biggest group, but... They use their speed and quickness very well to get into gaps and create problems. And right away, they find themselves able to get off the field here and force a punt. A couple of penalties to begin the drive. The undoing for Huff. As now it will be punted away. Dante Nicholson, the deepest to receive the punt. Not it's a, a short one, no. Janked out of bounds by Nolan Hooser. It will be out of bounds at the 42 of West Charlotte. All right, so as expected, first time around, if you're West Charlotte, the Lions, an impeccable defense. That's where they've come through in games so far. This Huskies defense, no slouch either. Offensively, what do you expect out of the Lions tonight? I think Katie Smith is going to have to have a big game with his feet if they're going to win this game. These corners at Huff are really, really good. Whether it's Matthews on one side, Rayner Jr. on the other side, both guys really, really good in one-on-one -on -one situations. But Katie Smith is going to have to make some plays with his feet. The sophomore quarterback also with a couple of teammates in the backfield. Triple option look, it's a pitch. And a short gain. One, maybe two yards there for the Lions at the second down. And there you see the speed of this Huff defense. Usually that's a downhill run very quickly for this West Charlotte offense. Not against this Huff defense. They flow really fast, they get to the football, and they gang tackle really, really well. Scotty Cooper and Cam Roberts in the backfield. Got a man to jump on the defensive line. And it is against Huff. Yeah, they got Zane Bostic there, number 47. Jumped into the neutral zone. And that really is obviously a positive for West Charlotte. But think about it. They didn't get much on that first down play. And then all of a sudden you get a free five yards. So now you're in a second and five, second and six kind of situation which allows you really to kind of open that playbook up whether Katie Smith wants to run it or they want to get him out on the edge to throw the football down the field. Something to watch also, Reggie, already the third penalty on Huff. Yeah. 
Second and four to gain for West Charlotte. And the play clock hit zero. Wow. So each team with a delay of game now. Yeah, and that one coming after a defensive penalty. So that one really, I'm sure, bothers West Charlotte head coach Sam Griner. That, that's a situation you just can't have. Now you're back to a second and long again. Nine yards to go is KD Smith. As we've seen all season, running to the sideline to get the offensive play called in back to his huddle. Got Scotty Cooper in the backfield with him. Motion man there. They got to burn a timeout here because of the play clock. It was down to two again. First timeout for West Charlotte. Rocky starts for both teams. No score in the first quarter. 837 left in the first on a Bay Hackle Sports game of the week. First quarter here on a Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. Still no score. First offensive series for West Charlotte as Katie Smith receives the snap. Immediately goes to Scotty Cooper. One-handed catch behind the line of scrimmage. Lowers his shoulder and forces his way forward for a few years. A lot going on after the whistle there. That's a nice job here. Lowers that shoulder. I saw a big collision there. It just didn't involve the ball carrier, which was very interesting. And then he falls forward, but the forward progress was ruled stopped at about the 48-yard line. Cooper and Sincere Gray in the backfield for West Charlotte. Andy Smith signals out. The receivers at his left gives on the shotgun snap to Sincere Gray, who's bottled up at the line of scrimmage. Aiden Bell on the tackle. James Nesta was there as well. Yeah, they didn't really have great timing there. It looked like maybe that snap was a little bit off. Smith was able to get it, hand it off, but that was a timing issue there. And obviously this defense was able to step up and get the stop. Similar first series for West Charlotte as it was for Huff, and now the Huskies will call a timeout prior to the assumed punt. Jacob Dossi, their return man, was back and headed back to the sideline. Seven minutes, 25 seconds left in the first quarter. Shaky starts for both teams. Offensively, Reggie, we've seen Huff penalties on both sides of the ball. West Charlotte got a delay of game then had to burn a timeout because they were going to get another immediately after them. Is that jitters? Is it the fact that both of these teams are 
superior defensively? What do you think is going on? I think it's a combination of that, and it's a big moment, and both of these coaches understanding. Uh, now, the penalties by the player, that's that's a whole different deal, right? Maybe it's jitters, nervousness, or whatever, because this game is big. And then from the coaching standpoint, they don't want to give anything away in terms of a, a, a cheap, you know, fake punt here or something like that because possessions in this game and opportunities to put points on the board are going to be at such a premium. Jacob Dawsey allows it to bounce by him and inside the 10-yard line now at the 5 and inside of there. Down by the Lions. And Huff is pinned deep inside oh, of its own territory. It looks like the spot is at the... Three yard line where they'll begin. Yeah, they had a conversation with Dossie as soon as he came off the field about fielding that ball. They gave away by not fielding that probably about 15 to 18 yards of field position, and that's not even including what may have been any kind of a return. So, from a field position standpoint, now you've got a quarterback that is backed up uh, obviously against a fast defense, so you've got to be careful having him drop back in the end zone or do anything uh, that is not fast hitting out of that end zone with this offense. Huff likes to run the football. I don't know if they would prefer run it for 97 yards of field. Blakeney out of the shotgun. Hands it off. And a short gain of maybe two yards there for the Huskies. Sincere Day, the freshman defensive back in the attack for West Charlotte. And I think one of the main things you're going to notice in this game about the Huff offense, they're going to mostly run the football between the tackles because they understand trying to get to the edge against this speed on this defense is going to be difficult to do. They're going to try it at times, but more likely than not, when they run the football, they're going to run it in between the tackles and try to use their size to their advantage. Second and eight from the five. Another handoff. A bounce outside. Will Jones boulders through a defender and stumbles across the 20-yard line for the first down. Big time run there. And it's it's real simple, right? This is old school football. It's just a power. They pull the guard, they bring the other back across to lead up in there, and you get a big hitter, and now you're outside the 20-yard line, which opens up this offense. Now a pass over to the outside. The tackle slung rating. down. Day in on the plate again. Julian Carmichael, the senior linebacker, there as well for the Lions. Spots at the 26 yard line, a gain of one. That's an important play right there. They pick up six yards on first down, setting themselves up for a very, very manageable second and four here. This is where this offense wants to be ahead of the chains on second down. Blakeney hands, Jones again, not as much luck this time, that's about a yard, and it'll be third and three to go. Spots at the 27 yard line, gain of a yard and a half, maybe two. Both of these defenses have been solid so far in terms of keeping things in front of them, minimizing big plays outside of that one big run there you saw for Huff. Third down three. Counts for Blakeney. Everybody staying disciplined. Now on third and three. Makes the give to Jones. Goes underneath on the screen. And I think that's going to be enough for the first. It is. Moves the sticks on the third down conversion. And the Huskies keep this thing rolling. That's just a great individual effort right there for another Acosta heating, cooling, and electrical first A household name for quality and trust. Under five minutes to play in the first quarter. But Darren, that, that screen you saw right there and how quickly West Charlotte was able to converge them, that's what I mean about the speed of this defense. It's just really, really hard to get a lot of big plays. We get another stoppage of play here. I think this is an equipment issue here. Yeah, they've even paused the, the play clock as well to make the adjustment. So we set it now under 20 on the play clock for Huff. And moves Will Jones from side to side. Zips it out. 
Jacob Dalsey catches, cuts up on his knee. That was math. That was all that was. They saw a press corner against a two-receiver set. I'm just going to throw it out there and, and see if my receiver can get free and get up the field. Dalsey there able to pick up a couple of yards. But again, West Charlotte not as concerned about that as some other schools in this area might be because of the amount of speed they have on that defense. Yeah, they closed the gap there. Seems mundane, but it's a difference in a yard. So second and eight. Dossie, the receiver in motion. Blakeney looking up the middle. Found Dossie. The catch made. He's inside the 40 on the other side and brought down by DeQuinder Williams. Nice job here by Blakeney. Dossie's just going to get up the middle, run right up the seam. They let him run free. He's able to make that grab going up the seam. Picks up big yardage there for a first down. It is at the 38 of West Charlotte. Huskies rolling now. Blakeney fakes underneath, goes deep, and just off the fingertips of his intended target. He was looking for Ashton Hampton. Yeah, it's interesting on that play. They had two guys in the same area. And Will Jones were both there. And I wonder if that ball was maybe for Jones. And Hampton, I don't want to say stepped in front, but thought it was for him as well. Not quite sure who was in the right place, who maybe wasn't in the right place, but certainly a play there that they could have had. I think the fake down low, closer to the line of scrimmage, certainly afforded them the timing to make a play there. And CISO in motion. Here's Jones on the carry, cuts up the middle, and is brought down by the ankles. West Charlotte defender. Jalen Carter, the senior defensive tackle, has to be removed. He's lost his helmet. That's a good job officiating there by this crew. They noticed it right away, blew it dead, let him know he had to go off, and then they get right back to play. With number 57, Justin Wilson, in his stand in the middle of the defense there. I mean, one thing we know about West Charlotte, they've got depth in that front seven. Absolutely. They've got depth all over the place. And the scary part about it is most of it is just as fast as the guy that just left the field. Blakeney turns to his right. It's picked up in the air. And Jamari Smith was near it but couldn't pull it in. And Deshaun Baker wants a pass interference call, and the officials, I think, are basically saying because that ball was tipped, you're not going to get that call there as that ball was batted down at the line of scrimmage. So that'll force a field goal attempt by Nolan Hooser. This one's going to be about 52 yards, which Coach Baker told us basically if he's in the stadium, he'll give this kid a shot if the conditions are good, and they're really good so far tonight. There's no wind or anything. Yeah, we've seen him hit 50-plus at least a time or two before, and that's exclusively with us in the building. He's done it countless times when we weren't around. For 52 yards, Hoosier, it's got the distance, and it's through. That puts Huff on the board to lead three to nothing, a 52-yard field goal by the most prolific field goal kicker in North Carolina state history. And the Clemson commit there, Darren, I'll tell you, I think he might have been good from about 60 on that. There was plenty of room for young Mr. Hooser on that one. And that may not seem like much. That is a huge three points for Huff to put on the board there. Well, man, this first quarter has flown by, right? Just two minutes, 20 seconds left in the opening stanza. And that is, some, there's something to be said about the way that this game is likely to go. I think it stands up to how we predicted it might go. The offenses are not the shows for this team as this kickoff 
is brought to you by Queen City Audio, Video, and Appliances. Now, that's not to say they're not good offenses. No, I think that's you're trying to explain to people how good these defenses are. Yeah. These defenses are both really good, and both coaches know that. And then when you've got a kicker like that, because here's the other key of this, right? Again, Hoosier is on his way to Clemson. We, we know that. But the thing that is sometimes forgotten is that kind of a kick right there. It's a touchback. They've got to go essentially the length of the field. They've got to go 80 yards. And the more you force them to go 80 yards, the percentages go down for any team. I don't care if you're Pat Mahomes or Tom Brady. The more you have to go 80 yards, it's much more difficult to score points. That's just a percentage thing. And if you're Huff, you've got to lean into that. And every time you can put points on the board and kick it off and force this offense to go the distance, you do that. Direct snap to Scotty Cooper. He gains 15 before being brought down. Frustrated with himself that he didn't get more after being wrangled by Morgan Linton. Yeah, we've seen them do this a lot. It looks like Katie Smith is taking that snap, but he starts working away from the football on the snap, and then all of a sudden it's coming right at you with somebody else holding the football. Another lost helmet, by the way. Linton, you saw there, the tackler has to be removed for at least a play. And a false start on West Charlie. They'll go back it up five, first and 15 from their own 30. Unfortunately, though, for Linton, and they're trying to figure out if he can go back in. He cannot go back in because technically a snap did not occur. That was something that they immediately checked on. Good job by the coaching staff and the officials getting that rectified quickly. Be wide for the Lions, two backs. It remains Cooper and Gray with the quarterback, Katie Smith. Smith gives to Gray this time. Hard cut from right to left, spins out of a tackle, and is brought down after a gain of eight. Number 23, the Huskies. really needed that to get into. Obviously a better situation here on second down to set up a manageable third down, but I think they're going to get caught. That's another false start on this offense. That'll back them up five more yards. Instead of second and seven, they'll have second and 12 here. So the five-yard penalty for the false start against the Lions moves it back to the 33-yard line. Second down and 12. So behind the schedule after that impressive run by Sincere Gray got them back within the chains. Smith drops back to pass, nowhere to go. James Nesta with the sack. The Oklahoma commit, James Nesta, number two, coming off that edge, and they did everything they could to keep him from getting there. Great job finishing the play in the backfield to set up a third and very long, and Chachi Sullivan starting to dial it up with this defense. Second and long and third and long, he is going to heat your quarterback up almost every time, and you have to be prepared to protect it, or you're going to have problems all night. It's now third and 26 for West Charlotte. Smith takes off with it immediately up the middle. We'll get a few yards. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. So it'll be fourth and very long after we flip the field and we return for the second stanza. Three to nothing through a quarter of play. Huff with the lead at home here on a Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. Stay with us.
Time for the second quarter of action at our Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. A 52-yard field goal by Nolan Hoosier. The difference so far in this one, it's fourth and very long for West Charlotte. They look to punt it away. Dante Nicholson kicks it through the air. Nick Dossie lets it roll. It'll get inside the 45. And the Huskies, after it's down, will begin at their own 41. And obviously right now, if you're Huff, at the Huff 40 you have seen that if you get West Charlotte a little bit behind the chains, they've struggled to move the football. So the next step, right, the next piece of that evolution, you get more points on the board and force them to have to truly play from behind and chase you down. This offense, because of the way they like to run the football, it's not really designed to come from behind. So if you can make this a two possession game, if you're Huff, you feel great about it. Well, the Huskies, their last time with this, the offense on the field started to roll a little bit. You've got a diamond wide receiver set the right side of your screen on the near side. Line. Do not yeah, that turns out it was supposed to be trips. Yeah, you, there's no way you can have a diamond and then another receiver and a back in the backfield. You have to go empty there if you've got five receivers. So Ashton Hampton was the one who tried to sneak back to the sideline as the fourth man, the odd man out. Penalty against the Huskies. Everybody's out there counting and pointing, but it's pretty simple. You've got one quarterback, you've got five offensive linemen, that's six. So you can only have five other people. Instead, they had six other people. <laughs> okay, so it turns out was supposed to be the diamond after all. Here they go. They run it out. They've got six. Yeah, the issue was there, there should not have been a back. The back was supposed to be a part of the diamond formation. Let's see what this turns into. Blakeney drops back to pass. He goes the other way. And it's caught. Out of bounds at the 33-yard line. That's one way to flip the field. He goes up to Sean Brady and nope, out of bounds. And you kind of had a feeling they, they were setting something up with that formation. They go the other way, and Blakeney's just got to do a better job, I think, of giving his guy a chance, give him more room to come down in bounds. That one was close. Obviously, there the officials ruled it incomplete. Awfully close. So close, Reggie. I'm wondering if they're not ruling that Brady maybe dropped it and trapped it onto the ground as he went out of bounds. Mm. I, th I thought he had a foot in. There's a handoff on second and 15. And a second down carry by number 11, Will Jones. What's doing there, if anything, for the Huskers? And that's one of the things with both of these defenses. If you don't get something on first down and you get behind them, you're going to be staring at a third and long. Because when you get predictable on second down or when you have to run the ball to just get something easy, get a couple of yards to set up third down, they're going to be all over. Third and 15. Watch for number 22, Bullard, coming off a slot blitz here. There Blake he comes. Fakes the handoff. Nobody was there. Has to take off with it himself. Gets by the initial line of scrimmage, and he's ripped down to the ground by Jaden Smith. That's a pretty impressive game on third down, but laundry in the backfield. And you see Bullard, number 22, come off the edge there, just unable to get home, but that's what really flushed Blakeney out of the pocket and forced him to take off running. Does appear to be coming back. Both teams make their way back toward the original line of scrimmage. No signal yet. And it's a hold against the offense. So holding the ball against the Huskies. Ten yards backwards. So both offenses really strong. The with penalties so far in this game, ending up with very long third down situations. Their own 26, the Huskies have to get it to the opposite 49 yard line. Blakeney finds a man on the screen. And CISO cuts up and gets by the original line of scrimmage. So again, not a bad 
performance there on third down, but not near enough to convert. Jamari Smith, and we'll find out number seven. Jamari Smith in on the tackle for West Charlotte. Completion was to the 43, but it's coming back. And this is being backed up again due to another penalty and an eligible man downfield for the Huskies. Yeah, that's always dangerous on screens, and the reason why is because the ball, if the linemen are going to go downfield, they have a short window of which they can go downfield, but also the pass has to be completed behind the line of scrimmage. And if that ball is completed at the line of scrimmage or beyond that, it can create that penalty even though the linemen are doing everything they think they're supposed to be doing there. Reg, I know you love talking posi field position battle. West Charlotte accepts the penalty. They get third and 30, and they stop a short run. Yeah, the idea here was their mindset is hopefully Hoosier uncorks another punt that does not explode off his foot, and they get great field position. Worst case scenario, they're going to have the football probably around their own 40-yard line or better in this scenario. Dante Nicholson back to receive the punt. Maybe on Jones, 15 yards in front of him. Hoosier rips into one. Nicholson has to fall on it after muffing. And they're down at their own 28-yard line. Now, he flipped the field himself. Hoosier, is, yeah. that's one element, right? He's able to do that. Yeah. But imagine, had they not accepted all those penalties, he would have been doing that from uh, that might have been 15, a touchback. 20 yards up. Right, it might have been a touchback. Or West Charlotte could have very easily been pinned inside their own 10. Absolutely, absolutely. When you've got 81 on your team, all drives end in a kick. Punt field goal extra point to lay down. Amy Smith, quick out on the screen. Dante Nicholson gets to the edge. Shoved out of bounds after a game of a few. I didn't even realize that. I gave you the worst to the best scenario. Punt, field goal, extra point. I didn't, I didn't do that on purpose. Did not do it on purpose. Did not. Just kind of came out that way. I guess I'm just built that way. We go the same play. Nicholson has to catch it behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, like still able to scurry for a few more yards. That's pretty effective so far. It, no, it's one there, so third and six or so. It's just an extension of the running game. That's essentially what that is. And trying to get this defense chasing sideline to sideline. Third down six from the 32. Charlotte needs six for the first. They'll go for way more than that. Katie Smith launches it out of bounds and overthrows the intended target, Rakeem Finch. He also overthrew one of the Huff coaches who tried to make the catch running down the sideline. I would not try that myself because I probably would blow a hamstring in that situation. You kick. You play a, about a half a game up here while we're calling. <laughs> I'll get my exercise on a weekly basis. I get it. Friday night I in the booth. I, I don't wear a fitness tracker, but I'm certain my heart rate gets up when we do these, especially the close ones. It'll probably be worthwhile. There you go. A hunting scenario for West Charlotte. And they're going to have to burn another timeout to punt this football here. Timeout. Timeout. Second of the first the half. Second. Prevents a delay of game, so they'll do it when we return from break. Three to nothing, Huskies ahead with 9-11 left in the first half.
minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the first half here on our Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. Huff shutting out West Charlotte so far, and the scurrying coach on the sideline there has got a lot to do with yeah, it. Yeah, defensive coordinator Chachi Sullivan, one of the more animated guys you'll see, but he's done an excellent job really leading this defense for years and years. It's one of the reasons why they're a staple uh, near the top of the standings and rankings uh, in this area because his defenses obviously keep this football game and this football team in games and then offensively they do their thing so so far in this game his defense pitching a shutout be sure you tune in right here on bayhacklesports.com tonight 11 p.m is the spot or bayhacklesports.com is the spot 11 p.m is the time the blitz is the thing <laughs> uh, highlights scores all the action from the area's high school football that has occurred tonight led of course by the Bayhackle Sports crew. We'll be there too. We I was joke about to ask it every you if week. we were going to be there. We joke about it every We're just going to call it I'm out. Just gonna, right. We're just going to, we'll pass that. Pass the tease. They know. Here's Will Jones up the middle. Gets the first down. Somersaults down near the 30. That's a gain of about 18 yards on the first play from scrimmage. And again, Darren, they go up the middle. They're not trying to go off the edges against this defense because there's too much speed. They have figured out that there's something to running between the tackles. This is the biggest offensive line Huff has really ever had, and they're having success so far tonight. Jones, another runoff tackle, gets to the edge, cuts up inside, and he's down near the 20 now. Nice job there by Jones. Just gets downhill right away. And now Huff going with a little bit of tempo in their offense. From the 10, they go to Jones. Inside handoff. Why not? Three in a row. See if he can put the exclamation point on the drive. And now Deshaun Baker wants to go even faster. I love this. Use tempo to your advantage. But right there, you go wide against this defense. It gets harder and harder to make plays. Sincere day, the open field tackle on Jones there on the screen. So that's four consecutive touches for Will Jones. Balls on the nine-yard line. Reggie, I'm no expert. That's what you're doing up here. But seems to me like maybe they got something cooking to go elsewhere. As Sam Griner. A little heated here. From the West Charlotte nine yard I think maybe he's arguing that Huff went too quickly. That's an interesting question. I, I'm not quite sure what his, obviously his frustration there is, but you have to give credit to the officials. They're willing to have a conversation about it. And now here they're going to blow the play dead. And the Huff Huskies call their second timeout of the half. Clocking it at 8.01. And Griner and the head referee are still having a conversation around the 25-yard line. Not quite sure, again, what this conversation is about, but they are having that conversation as now the officials and Griner part ways. Meanwhile, for Huff, it's a big opportunity. You're down inside the 10. An opportunity to go up two scores. Oh, look, worst case scenario, you run Hoosier back out there to clips to commit, see if he can put one through the uprights. But if you're Deshaun Baker, you want no part of him having to kick a field goal here. You want to go up two possessions to include a touchdown, and you do that by getting in the end zone here. Now third down. Goal to go. All at the nine yard line for Huff. One for three on third down so far in this first half. Blakeney looking to his left. There's it, corner of the end zone. Had a man, and Dossie can't reel it in at the sideline. Yeah, I think Dossie probably, well, they ruled that a touchdown. Touchdown Huskies after Dossie appeared not to and now they the wave it off now the officials have just waved it off I wasn't sure what they saw there 
Oh, and now there's a hold being called on the Huskies. Wow. Regardlessly. So I, yeah, I thought I was getting ready to, to about nothing. Right, there. I was getting ready to say I thought so Dawson was unable to bring that in because I think he was focused on making sure his feet were in. But nonetheless, they wave it off, and there's a holding call. I mean, to the naked eye, I thought there was no chance Dawson caught it. So it was ruled not a touchdown, then a touchdown, then not a touchdown, and then a holding call on Huff, and then maybe some more calls to be made. And if you're Griner, you go ahead and decline this because they're going to they kick a field goal either way with Hoosier. There's no sense in taking this penalty and giving them another opportunity to maybe get a big play and get in the end zone. I think you got to decline this penalty and make them go ahead and put their special teams out there. Reggie on the spot, so the middle to decline. Fourth down. It's an offense that had a couple of explosive plays on this drive. Don't give them another opportunity to get in the end zone when you've put them in a situation where the kicker is likely going to come out. This will be 27 yard attempt for Hoosier, who knocked through a 52 yarder on the other side of the field last quarter. Hoosier hits it off. Plenty of distance. He could have hit that one times two, and it makes it, <laughs> si makes it six to nothing. Yeah, anytime you've got a weapon like that, I think you, gotta, you can't be afraid to use it. Obviously, for this offense to to be able to get another field goal there go up six nothing that's big uh, there's there's two schools of thought here but it's kind of the same result Deshaun Baker is frustrated that they've been unable to get in the end zone and coach Sam Griner from West Charlotte is happy that all they've done is allow two field goals here with his offense. He's had some issues moving the football as well. Well, now that you mention that, I'm remembering Coach Baker mentioning to us earlier in the week if he could improve anything about this team's performance from the season up until this point. It would be capitalizing on red zone options. Absolutely. Absolutely. He, he emphasized to us, we want more touchdowns in that scenario. Now, it's a luxury to have Nolan Hooser able to knock down kicks and to boot balls back for touchbacks as this kickoff is brought to you by Queen City Audio, Video, and Appliances. No, you're right. And one of the things he said was sometimes it's, it's just not executing, and then other times it's penalties in critical situations. And that's another one of those examples. Hooser on a tear, sends it out of the back of the end zone. And with that, we get started from their own 20. It's like the kickoff team, they're just doing wind sprints when that guy's kicking off. They're running down there because it's conditioning time. Lions offense, back out for another crack at it. Smith, the quarterback, with the backs of Scotty Cooper and Sincere Gray with him. This is a handoff to Gray. Splits defenders, gets to the line to gain, and he's dropped a yard afterward, gain of 11, and it's a first down. He is number 23, Sincere Gray, picks up 11 yards. Important first down for this offense. See if they can get into a little bit of a rhythm, build some confidence, and potentially put some points on the board. Now they go underneath, Nicholson again, shakes a tackle, and is pushed down from behind by James Nesta. That'll be just short of a first down, gain of nine on the screen pass. James Nesta, another one of those highly re regarded players on this roster. He's on his way to Oklahoma. We mentioned Hoosier going to Clemson, Egan Boyer, the offensive lineman making his way, at least committed right now, to Penn State. State head coach James Franklin were shifts passing in the night. <laughs> how, how come you didn't get to chop it up with the head coach? No, I did lines? not miss him. Well, you know, I was I was on assignment last evening myself. You were. 
busiest man in show business, Reggie Walker. And now, maybe a double pass instead. It'll get a yard as Sincere Gray bullies his way for the first down. And number three, Anthony Walker. The question is, did the chains, or down marker, if you will, or it's the chains. Did the chains survive that? Gray. Voted over. Okay, we are getting the signal from the bottom of your screen, the official on the opposite sideline. It was, in fact, a first down. Another Acosta so heating, cooling, and electrical first, first down. Sure. Shout out to Acosta. They do have good motion. He's off up the middle, Scotty Cooper. Not nearly as involved as we've seen him offensively so far this season. Remember, this is the third time we've seen West Charlotte. Absolutely. Our Bay Hackle Sports game. And they've been that good. Scotty Cooper's been that good. There's a handful of carries for him so far. They're trying to find, just trying to find something they can hang their hat on with this offense in this game so far. And the down marker, the, the officials are holding play. One of the chains for the first down marker is struggling after the players ran into it the previous position there toward the top right-hand part of your screen there. Looking a little wobbly. <laughs> Second and eight for West Charlotte. Here's Scotty Cooper. Wow, he snuffed out in a hurry. Anthony Walker with the tackle from behind. Anthony Walker gets through those events to make the tackle. Nathan Mitchell, the sophomore defensive lineman, number 90, was the first there, too. Yeah, they brought an extra, extra defender right at the snap of the ball to cover up all of those gaps. Great gap integrity by this defensive front seven to set up the negative play there. Another third down for West Charlotte, and it's another long one. Ten to gain. A flip Scotty Cooper's way, and he has to be dragged down from behind to prevent the first. So right around midfield, it'll be fourth and two or three. That actually makes you wonder if West Charlotte's going to go for it. Yeah, I think, I think you do. I mean, the way your defense is playing, yeah, you're down 6 nothing, but your defense has, by and large, done a really good job slowing this Huff offense down for the most part in terms of not allowing them to get in the end zone. And you're right around midfield, not much of an advantage from a field position standpoint. They need three. KD Smith takes off with it right away and is stuffed at the line. Cameron Sear was right there to make the tackle with Xavier McIntyre to help. Yeah, just a great job here, understanding and recognizing this is a quarterback draw here and making a big play. Again, Chachi Sullivan and that defense able to get off the field. So the turnover on downs gives it to Huff in plus territory. They start at the 48-yard line. Blakeney, hands off. Look out. Here we go. Jeremiah Jones, first carry of the night, 48 yards, and a Huskies touchdown. Speed. That's that's it. The vision was there, the understanding of the scheme was there, and then the explosive speed. And he makes a house. You outrun this West Charlotte defense like that, you've got another gear that you're able to go to because those guys all have a bunch of speed. Bruce's extra point is true. That makes it 13 to nothing. This is the second longest running play of the season for Huff. I mean, look at this. Look at him. I mean, he's opening up the margin on all of these guys. Jaden Smith doing a good job trying to chase him down there at the end, unable to get there. But that is a big, big play there for Huff to get that touchdown now. Obviously a two-possession game, but this West Charlotte offense has struggled in the first half. They're going to have to get in the end zone to get back in this ballgame, trailing 13 to nothing. 
fourth rushing score of the season for Jeremiah Jones. That leads his team. And with the way both of these defenses are, Reggie, that's quite the statement, right? You break through for the first touchdown by either side against this stingy Lions defense. But also, if you're Huff, you're pretty comfortable at 13 to nothing at this point. Absolutely. The way your defense is playing, you'll take that any day of the week. Another Nolan Hooser kickoff presented by Queen City Audio Video and Appliances. And another touchback. And the Nolan Hooser kickoff into the end zone. So, so West Charlotte back to business offensively. What needs to occur more for them? They found some success on that little bubble screen to Nicholson, occasionally a run up the middle, but for the most part, Huff has been very difficult to pass through. They've got to get ahead of the chains. That's the main thing. They've got to get five or six or seven yards on first down, and then they can do some different things with their offense. As it stands in this game so far, much of what they've done has been a lot of second and seven or eight plus which is very, very difficult on an offense. First and 10, Katie Smith, the signal caller, drops back, Nesta pursuing. Smith gets out of the way, shakes a little and drops down back at the 20. No gain, maybe a yard after Xavier McIntyre with the tackle and Smith is shaken up. And this is the last thing. West Charlotte wants is to have their quarterback, KD Smith, their leader, go down. And I, look, I, I don't mean to, to minimize his ability as a player, but his leadership might be more important than his physical attributes to this football team. This kid is a, a natural leader. He's a born leader. He's a guy that everyone follows because they understand that he does things the right way all the time. Well, and Sam Griner, that guy right there, has explained to us, as I believe that's going to be Cam Roberts coming into the game, it's a different jersey number because of the pink numerals. Well, it seems like Cam Roberts was there on the sideline. This is, we don't have a jersey number for this individual. I'm not sure who this is. Number 39, I believe. It's a direct snap to Scotty Cooper either way, and he gets through the middle of the Huskies. Slowing things down, trying to make it even farther down the field. He coughs it up, and Huff thinks they've got it. West Charlotte retains and adds a few more yards to the Scotty Cooper run. Wow. Big time by Cooper there. Takes the direct snap and just explodes right up the middle. Great job by this Huskies defense to keep him from getting in the end zone. And now if you're West Charlotte, you got a big lift there. And KD Smith is now back in this ball game. See if you can get in the end zone to finish this drive out and get back in this football game. 62 yards on the carry. So from the Husky 18, first and 10. West Lions into the red zone for the first time tonight. Smith with Cooper and Gray in the backfield, and the play clock is at zero. Sam Ryder get a timeout call in in time. Well, I think he's frustrated. I think he feels like the play clock, he, he's complaining about something. So either he thinks it's starting too quickly or he's frustrated with his guys not getting to the line of scrimmage and getting the ball snapped. Obviously not quite sure which one that is. And back it up five yards. Now out of the red zone. First and 15. Smith back, floats it up. Nicholson. Into the end zone, touchdown West Charlotte. The pass from quarterback KD Smith. KD Smith remained poised as the rush was coming, knowing he had his man open 
right in the center of the end zone. Yeah, great job. Excellent touch on that football. Put it up over the top of the defense. Let his guy Nicholson run under it. That's a textbook way to throw that route there and get the touchdown. The extra point is, is through is for Chikwech. And look at that, it's within a touchdown. 13 to seven, Huff in the lead. We got a good one here in the second half, Reg. Sometimes that's all it takes, right? You need somebody to do something individually and then everybody on the roster lifts up. You get a big play like that, you get in the end zone. All of a sudden, we got a ball game. That's why explosive plays are so important in football. You, you get a couple of explosives, and then all of a sudden, you're in really good territory. You get in the end zone, and Uncle Mo, right? We always talk about Uncle Mo, momentum in football. Uncle Mo's undefeated because it always jumps on someone else's back and rides it until it has to jump on somebody else's back. Chikwayach on for his second to kickoff of the night. Remember the first one he squibbed up the middle. And goes right to an up man. And is returned by Jason and Ciso to the 42. 235 with a timeout is plenty of time if you're Huff here to go down and get points. You just got to stay under control. Don't rush. Don't panic. Get called what you want called. It's a big spot here and a good opportunity for Trey Blakeney and Huff to execute here and put some points on the board going into the half. It's that middle eight. We're in it. And right now, West Charlotte is winning that middle eight. Blakeney on first and ten. Handoff and see so. Jukes gets to the outside. He'll get positive yardage here. And it's a gain of three. Second and seven on coming for the Huskies. This, you mentioned, an opportunity for Huff. This is a big opportunity for West Charlotte. We would appreciate the name. With the clock running down in this second quarter, remember, they deferred on the opening kick, so they'll get it to begin the second half. If we're going to score here, keep it within six. In pretty good shape. Blakeney steps up in the pocket, scrambles. It's the first and is tripped up at the line to gain. He'll move the sticks, though. How good was Trey Blakey in handling that situation? Steps up in the pocket, sets the throw, realizes there's nothing there, and just glides out of there and picks up a first down with his feet. Here's the quad receiver set again. Yeah, they Huff weren't set. Yeah. That's, and, that's, and this is where the quarterback has to stay patient and understand what's happening and let those guys get set up. The penalty is against the Huff offense. It'll back it up to a first and 15. And you can go back to the diamond look there, but you, you burned it a little bit. Absolutely. You're, you're not going to get away with that play right now. Like the call there, it's a good idea. You can go quick. You got a numbers advantage out there. Got to use it. So now they'll just go traditional four wide receivers, three on the near side. And CISO split out. Ooh, up the middle for Dossie. He tipped it and it drops incomplete. That could have been trouble for the Huskies. I thought they were looking to set basically the same thing so up with a screen out to the flat with the receivers working inside to run those defensive backs off. But instead, he elects to go over the middle and complete. Second, second and 15. The Huskies. Huskies in their own 49 yard line. And an eligible man downfield down penalty. If accepted, we'll back it up 
even more. It looks like they're about to pace this back. Nope. Check that. Penalty declined. It'll be second and 15. Well, that's smart. Don't give them the extra down. The idea is you want to get this offense off the field as soon as possible if you can. Well, and they're already behind schedule, right? So they're, again, more faith in your defense Absolutely. to not allow a big explosive play. A diamond formation again. Wide receivers. Sire Fraser Sutton is the one in the back. Assumedly would be on the receiving end of a, of a screen. This will stops the play though. For evidently no reason. Another scenario where if you're Huff. Kind of, you kind of burn that four wide receiver look. They'll stay in it though. Blakeney goes the other way. It's nearly picked off, and it drops incomplete. Pass incomplete intended for Sean Brady, number seven. The Quinder Williams. Really thought he had a pick. There. Uh, he absolutely he drove that route, and all he was thinking about was going the other way and putting six more points on the board for his team. You want the fire, right? <laughs> Got some sort of advice there from his head coach, Sam Griner. Yeah, I think he was telling his head coach what he saw and what he wanted to do there. <laughs> Might have been head coach listening to player instead of player listening to head coach on that one. And coaches like that, that back and forth with their players, the mindset, the competitive nature, they like that. And this is going to be another flag on this Huff offense. Another false start this time on. It was already third and long. So this will make it third and 20 if it is indeed early movement. Oh, no. confirms. For five yard penalty. Go third down. So that was off a backed up to their own 44 the yard line. Third and 20 to goal. game. Lately back to pass. Pressure in the pocket. He's dropped. Who else but Jaden Smith, the senior linebacker, making it fourth down and forever. Yeah, and that time Blakeney hung in there too long. It just there's nothing there. You got to get rid of that football sooner or tuck it and run. Nothing there, and he ends up taking the sack. That's going to allow a lot of time to run off the clock. If I'm Deshaun Baker, I'm taking as much time off this clock as I possibly can. About a 15 to 18, about an 18-second differential right now. So you want to let this clock run all the way down and then let Hooser see if he can kick it out of the, out of, over uh, the return man's head. Maybe you just let it bounce to run the clock out. Snapped when the play clock was at about 10 seconds. Nicholson picks it on a hop, full head of steam, headed to the outside. It's by a man who tripped, and he's out of bounds near the 40. 13.4 seconds on the clock. The eight-yard line. And nearly out kicked his coverage Texas there. Season. Great I, job here I, on the return. I was going to say Nicholson, who muffed a punt earlier. So he wait a couple hops there. Read it. You got to read it. And, and the other one earlier to his defense, he, he was basically turned sideways and going backwards. Makes that very, very difficult to catch a punt that way. If you're West Charlotte here, you comfortable with a six-point deficit, or are you taking a shot? Uh, I think you can take one, but you got to make sure you protect it. If nothing happens here, uh, you're content to just go in the locker room. They go direct snap. Gray has to reach up for it, reels it in, stays on his feet through what would have been a tackle. To number 23, sincere Gray. He's up to the 46. Pick up a six yards. Decent little six-yard run as. 28. The clock stops at three seconds, 2.9. The reason you're seeing two on your screen. 
A timeout by West Charlotte. That's their final good thing. They don't really have any more time to do anything with it. Well, we've said it before, Reggie. We don't miss with the Bay Hackle Sports game of the week, right? We got a good one tonight, a tight one tonight. One score game as we get close to halftime. How about next week? Undefeated Sun Valley, who's on by this week, so they will be undefeated when they make the trip to Weddington next Friday, a week from tonight. That one has all the conference implications <laughs> in the world. That's going to be fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> 7 o'clock kick a week from tonight. BayHackleSports.com. Reggie will be there. I will be there. The whole crew will be there. And we got unfinished business here. As long as Big Ball and Brady's there, we're good. Everybody's going to be there. Everybody is going to be there. Gonna be there. 46, second and four. Beatty Smith airs it out too long. It drops incomplete, and that'll take us to the half. What looked like it was going to be a Huff Huskies shutout through two quarters is now just a one-score game, 13-7. to seven. Huff leads it on their home turf at halftime here on the Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. It is halftime here in our Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. Man, we've got a good one on our hands. 13 to 7. The score midway through in favor of the home team, the hosting Huskies of Huff. Let's go to our Bay Hackle Sports crew to learn a little bit more about the visitors. West Charlotte, the Lions having a great season. The West Charlotte Lions were on a mission over the summer to prove they were the kings of the jungle. Undefeated after a month of football, they're certainly on the right track, and they gave their opponents fair warning. We was trying to let everybody know, and not everybody want to jump shit. West Charlotte did like, nah, like we want, we really want people to like stay where they was at before the season started, and like you know what I'm saying, we just gonna keep this thing rolling. But they're not satisfied. Even after early routes of Palisades and Monroe, they felt they had left points off the board. 
Like, we can't get comfortable right now. Like, yeah, we 4-0. We, know we might be ranked number two, but we're not even worried about that. In the month of September, they caught their stride, coming out strong in multiple standout games. First, a last-second victory over longtime rivals, the Independence Patriots, and then a goal-line stop on the road to take down the heavyweight high school in Mallard Creek for the first time since Sam Griner took over. Play, man, that draw right there, that draw, it was like a movie for real, for real. You know, like we just was going by our motto, man, the throne, got through the tough times, and that's really all our team is about, for real, for real. You got to find ways to win. You know, winners find a way, and uh, and I feel like this team has a, a whole group of winners, and if they're freshmen, sophomores, they're, or seniors, the whole key is they're resilient. They understand what this means to them this season. And so go on and doubt Dub C and the Ford boys all you want. They dare you to be surprised come December. And the, you know, when the dust settles, are they a believer or not? The whole key is the, the guys that we fight with, the coaches we play with, the administration we have at West Charlotte, they believe. The people that matter, the ones that are close to us, believe, and that's the only support we need. Reporting in Charlotte, Jack Taylor, Bay Hackle Sports. Thanks, Jack. This is homecoming at Huff High School. So the sharply dressed students making their way to midfield to see who wins. Halftime, 13 to 7. The score, Huff's advantage at the break here on a Bay Hacker Sports Game of the Week. It is homecoming here at Huff High School, 13 to 7 Huskies lead. So, homecoming court as well as other Huskies fans feeling great. Let's lay out for a moment and take in some of the festivities as homecoming king and queen, I assume, are about to be announced shortly. Hooser will line up for snap, hold, and history. The All American. Yeah. Is on the verge of being the most prolific kicker to ever play prep football. And he's following the footsteps of the people who love him most. 
It's the booming sound of history. Last year, I guess I set the state record, and I was like, oh, yeah. I just didn't even think of that. Now, Nolan Hooser is going for all of the states and all of the millions of high school players before him. The national record for field goals in a career is 56. He has 54. And aiming for the uprights of football lore. Every single kick you run out to, it's, it's the same, and it's a... Uh, I just love it. The genetics are strong in this one. Dad was a pitcher on a College World Series team, but the legacy of a scoring leg, he got it from his mama. Having the assist record and chasing this, building this record and, and having these moments where you score against Chapel Hill when nobody thought that you could do that, you know, back then and, and feeling so great about that and having the light on you and the conversations and things like that. And I, I look at him and yeah, I see it. Sherry Buter Hooser was an All-American at Clemson. She's in the Hall of Fame. She played for the United States national team. She's the mother of making clutch kicks. It's constantly this role that I play, trying to support, but ride the high. As Nolan's career continues to ascend, like making a 45-yard game-winning field goal in the playoffs, colleges came clamoring including Clemson. Just the culture they have there, the coaching staff, Coach Sweeney being, I mean, he can name my whole family. One of the nation's best, committed to one of the nation's best. His sister's on the soccer team. His dad and mom's career are proudly painted in orange. Now Nolan is ready to be a literal footnote in a Tiger family. It is, it's just felt like home. Um, definitely having the whole family there, it was just like, we're going to be a Clemson fan. Good stuff, John. Nolan Hooser already with a couple of field goals through the uprights tonight as his Huff Huskies lead at 13 to 7. Homecoming continues at Huff High. It is halftime of the Hacker Sports Game of the Week. Look at that, the homecoming king and queen making their way off the field 
here at Huff High School, where it's halftime on our Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week, 13 to 7. Huff in the lead. Let's kick it to our Bay Hackle Sports crew with a very important story from our friends at Hopewell High School. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This is the phrase pushing Brandon Gentry and the Hopewell football team to lead the charge throughout the month of September and beyond. It's a tricky game because, you know, as a football coach, you're trying to, hey, you got to be tougher. Um, you need to be harder and everything. But at the same time, I just think it's something like we all have to take CPR, and I think we all should have to take this as well, just to at least have the information. Because, um, like I say, I, I wasn't ready when that kid came up to me. Um, and now I feel like I'm ready and I can send them whoever they need to talk to. Fonda Bryant is a 28-year survivor of suicide and the mother of a former college athlete. She says the stigma surrounding mental health is nowhere stronger than amongst athletes and black men. Black culture, we just do not talk about mental health. And what we do is pray about it. Don't claim it. Give it to God as a sign of weakness because of the stigma. That is why we're dealing with this. So I'm just glad that Hopewell, the football team, is saying, you know what, Ms. Fonda? We're going to take a stand and let everybody know, and uh, as student athletes, there's no shame in mental health. Hopewell quarterback E.J. Johnson made it his focus to be an advocate for mental health among his teammates. At the end of the day, we all human. We all have our failures, and we just got to get over it and just find a way how to get over it. Whether that's been finding some way with someone to talk to and just get your feelings out. Brian says suicide is a ripple effect, but so is prevention. While the partnership with Hopewell Athletics has trickled throughout their student body, she wants to see it continue throughout the district. Here on the Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. Welcome back to the Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. Halftime score, Huff 13, West Charlotte 7. Nolan Hooser, a couple of field goals knocked through 
so far tonight, including a 52-yarder, getting some early warming up in for the start of the second half with Reggie Walker. I'm Darren Vaught. Reg, this one's been a lot of fun. Let's have a look at how it happened in the first two quarters of play. Yeah, both defenses actually started this game off pretty well. This was really the only play of consequence uh, in much of the first quarter. Obviously, the defenses were flying around playing well, and eventually you knew that we would get some offense. There's too many good athletes in this game, really on both sides of the ball. Obviously, you see here defensively, but you knew you would eventually get some offense from both teams, and when that came, it came in the form of some big plays. In the second quarter alone, it was another field goal by Hoosier. It was a 48-yard touchdown run by Jeremiah Jones of Huff to make it 13 to nothing. Here it is here. He's, a, he's carried the football once tonight. It was this play for six. He came into the game averaging more than eight yards a carry. That average has gone up because of that <laughs> touchdown run right there. An explosive play, and that's what you need in games like this. And then right here, nearly nearly a momentum changing game altering pick six and then this was really outside of one big run for west charlotte in the first half this was really their biggest play they had the big run which led to the touchdown as well so they figured out how to get something going in this game but still trailing 13-7. They trailed 13 to nothing. The touchdown you're talking about, Katie Smith to Dante Nicholson for 23 yards. That came with under three to play in the first half and got us where we are, 13 to seven to score. Huff with the lead, and we will begin the second half of play when we return here on the Bayhackle Sports. Game of the week, stay with us. about time to resume play for the third quarter here at our Bayhackle Sports Game of the Week. With Reggie Walker, I'm Darren Bott. We're glad you're here. 13 to 7, Huff with the lead over West Charlotte. And as we alluded to at the start of this one, Reggie, humongous implications when it comes to conference standings with this game here. Huff and West Charlotte 
three and zero spotless marks in conference play to this point. One's got to come away a winner, with one coming away a loser. I want to direct everybody's attention to the top left-hand corner of the screen. Three A slash four A. Here's why: West Charlotte is sitting at number two in these standings that you see. They are basically right now, based on the RPI and the way they do it with high school football playoff rankings in the in the state of North Carolina. West Charlotte is the number one seed as it stands right now overall for 3A schools. So they play in a conference that includes a lot of 4A schools, but right now West Charlotte would be the number one overall seed in the 3A bracket in the West in North Carolina. Huff obviously looking for an opportunity to be in that same boat uh, at the 4A level with their only loss obviously being to Burns out of South Carolina. All of that goes through essentially an RPI system that includes your winning percentage, your opponent's winning percentage, and your opponent's opponent's winning percentage. So a lot of variables there. But to be clear, West Charlotte is a 3A school as it sits right now. Per the Charlotte Observer and the rankings and the calculations, they would be the number one overall seed in the West at the 3A level. And Reggie, just to contextualize that, what it means for the Lions, the season ended today not as in right now with them trailing and right. taking a loss ultimately to Huff had it ended prior to this one kicking off West Charlotte would have home field advantage all the way up to an eventual state championship game if they were to make it that far I mean, yes that's huge. It, it is and, and and on the other side of that with that being said those home games matter right and 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 you're you're talking about a West Charlotte group that is obviously buoyed not only by the fact that they win games, but being here in Charlotte, they play mostly 4A schools, including their in-conference play, and that's what really helps them to be battle-tested, if you will, once they get into the playoffs. Well, they won the opening coin toss and deferred, so West Charlotte receivers on the kickoff to begin the third quarter. Nolan Hooser puts it out for a touchback. And the Lions trailing by only six after a late touchdown in the second quarter. Got them within a score. Katie Smith is the team's offensive leader. Converted. Listed as athlete simply. Converted from a defensive backfield position to play quarterback for this team. It's a toss. Sincere Gray gets about 15 yards before being brought down. That's a big play for this offense to get ahead of the chains, essentially move the chains, obviously, right here on that first play. But something, a bigger play, right, to get some momentum and rhythm into this offense. Actually spotted him for a 16-yard gain, first and 10 either way. Here's Gray in motion, and they'll direct snap Scotty Cooper deliberately. Peters up to the line and is brought down at the line of scrimmage. No game. This defense, a lot to deal with with this rushing offense from West Charlotte. They know that. And, and as they got ready for this game this week, they understood that gap integrity against this running game was going to be very, very important. As West Charlotte here looks like they are forced to burn a timeout early in this third quarter. They called their first timeout very early in the first half. It was on their first offensive series after committing a delay of game and trying to avoid a second consecutive delay of game. So the one score for West Charlotte and Reggie was the pass from 23 yards out after a penalty backed up the Lions outside of the red zone. Katie Smith really just kind of drifting back with pressure. Floated it up to the middle of the end zone for Dante Nicholson. Is, did, did they detect something that's going to be more effective because they've tried to run it a lot, sometimes successful, often not against the Huskies? Uh, yeah, I think I think they caught a couple of things. They saw a coverage situation they liked. There was basically zero coverage. There was no safety in the middle of the field or two safeties on the hashes. So they caught them with the right call in the right situation and got a touchdown. But I think that's one of the things. And then the second thing, 
that I think they've got to do in the second half. I do think they've got to do more with KD Smith in the passing game, but I think they've got to move the pocket a little bit and make this defense have to figure out where he's at. Smith with Cooper and Gray with him in the backfield. It's a handoff. Cooper bottled up. Nowhere to go as he was met by Chris Hilliard and Eli Anders. Great job defensively reading this play and attacking uphill, creating a negative play. Now a third and long scenario for West Charlotte. They've been behind the chains most of the night. 0 for 4 on third downs in the first half. Katie Smith runs in to Sam Greiner, his head coach, and then back toward the huddle to give the play call. Wide for the Lions, two to one side. Smith chased out by Anders, throws on the run, almost picked off, but it's incomplete. Pass is incomplete. That right there could have been a disaster because if this pick is clean, he may have a chance to go house call there. Carmel Quick doing an excellent job stepping in front of that one. Makes it fourth and long, and it looks as if West Charlotte will punt it away. Jacob Dawsey, the Turner Webb commit deep to receive. You're saying at halftime you saw some of the, some of the running Bulldogs coaches in attendance. He'll be out there tomorrow. Snap is loaded to Mari Smith, nearly blocked by James Nesta, but Dossi is it in, and it's from the 42-yard line. The Huskies will begin. This drive right here, if you're Huff. You've got to look at this as an opportunity to really, really put this West Charlotte team in a bind, go down and get a touchdown, take some time off this clock in the process, really start to put the squeeze on the Lions. Back out comes Trey Blakeney to lead the first offensive series of the second half for the Huskies. Will Jones with him in the backfield. Dyson and Ciso, and Ciso just in front of him. And it'll be a handoff to Jones. Stutter step in the backfield. He's grabbed from behind. Stop it to forward momentum. No game. Number 11, Will Jones. Rather a one-yard game. Jeff Gray give, Jeff give him four, Smith some forward the progress. Second and nine Second on coming for the Huskers. For the Again, West Charlotte keeping them behind the chains on first down and now second and long. Blakeney back to pass. Goes up the middle. It's caught a stiff arm. Ashton Hampton gets past the marker and then some for the first down. Down to the 41-yard line of West Charlotte. Nice job by Hampton, just works up the field and then across the middle there. Makes a nice catch, picks up positive yards to move the chains. Another Acosta heating, cooling, and electrical first down for the Huskies. Nick Neal Jr. in his first season as the starter for Huff. Hands off, here's Jeremiah Jones again. Grappled at the 20 yard line, keeps pushing the pile, staying on his feet and eventually tripped up inside the 10. He's touched the ball twice tonight. Once it went for 48 yards and a score, <laughs> and then that one. This guy is unbelievable. Look how difficult. I mean, it takes multiple guys and you love the offensive lineman getting in there, pushing the pile there at the end. Egan Boyer and the rest of that crew, excellent job there on that run, finishing that run to get inside the 10 yard line. First and goal from the seven, Jones will remain in the game. At this point, you're, you're nervous to give him the ball and it's only seven yards to the end zone, it, it lower his average. Yeah, eight, eight point, what, 8.4? 8 8.4 coming in. Got a couple of young 
long carries, almost 100 yards on the game. This one easier than the first two, and he's in for six. Touchdown, Huff. And he immediately tells his former head coach, Matt Jenkins, see this? I, I know what I'm doing here. I know how to get in the end zone. <laughs> I hadn't even noticed that. Good to see Matt Jenkins come up to the booth and say, hey, prior to kickoff, Jeremiah Jones with the rushing score, but an illegal formation on the offense. That will negate the touchdown. Well, at least now if they give it back to Jones and he does it again, it'll be above, it'll be his, above his average. average. Right. Yeah. There you go. We'll think of it that way. I'm sure he's going to find the positive in there, right? <laughs> Something tells me he's assuming that if he gets it handed off to him, he's going to be in the end zone either way. From the 20 this time, again, it's number 20. Reaches. And he's down at the one is the ruler. Thought he had another touchdown. I think the entire Huff offense thought he had a touchdown. That was close. I thought he got the ball out there. It looked to me like before the knee touch, he might have broken the plane with the reach. Instead, he's down at the one. Deshaun Baker's a player's coach. He's going to try to get his guy a touchdown here, I think. Well, second and goal from the one. They go to Jones. He did not get there. And he comes up short. No gain. That average is in trouble. <laughs> All right, so now third and goal from the one. What do you think? I mean, in the interest of being a player's coach, to go to him again here? I think so. I'd love to see him. Right, this is more of what I'd like to see, a little bit of a pistol formation so he can go downhill right away. He gets it, cuts underneath, hit as he crosses the goal line. There's the touchdown. Jeremiah Jones from a yard out. And so you see Coach Baker and his guy. He, he, he brings all these guys together, lets them know, hey, we, we, this is what we want to do, and we had to get our guy in the end zone. So a smooth sailing first series for Huff. As their first of the second half, Hoosers' extra point attempt is good. 20 to 7 the count with 6.41 remaining in the third on the Bayhackle Sports Game of the Week. Twenty to seven in favor of Huff on their home turf, following the second rushing score of the night for Jeremiah Jones. Nolan Hoosier teeing up for the kickoff, which will likely be a touchback. But Charlotte's got a couple of guys back deep to receive it anyway, and they're both dangerous. Avion Jones, Sincere Gray, the two men. 
is Hoosier. The screamer out of the back of the end zone. Here's what I love about that kicker. Hoosier tees the ball up. He gets ready to kick it. He checks his guys. He never put his mouthpiece in. He knew there was no chance he was going to have to run down the field or deal with anybody running the football back in his direction. He never even put his mouthpiece in. I don't That's Why do I even notice things? That's like that? a great observation. It's <laughs> exactly what you're doing with him. That's what you're here for. I mean, it says all you need to know. He's every single one of them. They've not been close. No. So. Why bother? Why bother? First and 10 from the 20 for West Charlotte. And now the play clock winding down, nearing zero. West Charlotte calls a timeout. Here's Sam Griner again. Sure. This time it looks, Reggie, like his frustrations are directed toward one of the officials. Yeah, he, he's trying to figure out why that play clock in his mind is starting so fast. I think he feels like that play clock is starting too quickly. Congratulations to the girls' varsity cross So that is the second timeout of the half taken by West American Charlotte, meaning Reiner's got one and only one remaining with 641 left to play in the third. Yeah, and should this become a tight game in the fourth quarter, that could loom large the lack of timeouts at that particular point in the game. But Coach Griner right now trying to manage right now because he knows and understands they can't afford to go behind three possessions by not maximizing this current position. Lions trailing by 13. But it's a resilient group. They have come through in clutch situations time and again so far on this 6-0 journey so far. Overthrow on the screen to Scotty Cooper drops in complete. Yeah, that's just a really good job defensively there by the Huskies making that a difficult throw. He forced to throw it away. Second and ten now. Davion Jones, the receiver out wide for West Charlotte. He's without a catch tonight. A.D. Smith spins as he receives the shotgun snap. Moves his way up the middle for a couple. Freddie Cameron steer with the tackle for Huff, although he had plenty of help. Third and seven for West Charlotte. Smith hit as he throws, finds his man. It's caught by Rakeem Finch. I think that's going to be a first down. Yeah, past the first down marker. It's a game of about 10. And it'll move the sticks. That's the first third down conversion tonight for West Charlotte. Yeah, big one at that. This is about as good a time of any to get one right now, certainly. It. Miller Costa heating, cooling, electrical first down here on the Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. And again, you said it, Reggie. That is a big one for the Lions. Cooper on the give. Grabbed at the line of scrimmage by Anders. Check that maybe a couple of yards behind the line. Go for a loss. This is where West Charlotte struggles oftentimes. It's when they get behind the chains on first and second down. They're calling it second and ten. That looks to be about a half yard shy of the original line of scrimmage. Smith. Hands to Gray. Trying to get to the edge. Can't. He's brought down at the line of scrimmage, but there's a flag. And the last thing you need is an offense to get further behind the chains, although I would think that Deshaun Baker and Huff, if this is on West Charlotte, they would likely decline it, but it looks like it might be a defensive. Well, no, the officials are talking to one another. 
Parker not going over the same runner. So a gain of a yard. But we do have a penalty. Face mask on the defense. That's a, a huge penalty. penalty from the end of the run. First down. So it adds to the end of the run, which was, you know, the play was essentially for no gain. It was getting ready to be like a third and nine. And all of a sudden, it's first and ten at almost midfield. That is a huge penalty. In their own 48, Gray the motion man and flags from multiple directions. Early movement on the Lions, so that'll back them back up five by five yards. That time it came on the offensive line. Yeah, that's a tough one because just give some of that penalty yardage right back. Now first and 15. Still a clean slate of downs, though. Tight formation here. Ray the motion man again. Nesta chasing down Smith, who has to chuck it out of bounds. I think that may be an intentional grounding. We'll see if they discuss this one. Maybe they say he got out of the tackle. Well, he definitely got it to the line of scrimmage. Number two, James Nesta. Number 12, Reggie Rayner applying the heat in the back. Good job by Katie Smith to get rid of that football and not take the negative play. Looks like there's no penalty. They're just going to keep it at second and 15. Smith, the athletic ability to get out of trouble there, but the recognition to toss it away. Direct snap. Gray, or rather Cooper. It's back to the original line of scrimmage and falls forward to about the fifth. Direct snap for West Charlotte. Number two, Scotty Cooper carries it forward. So now third and about eight to go for West Charlotte. Number 16, Cameron Sears with the tackle. Yes, he's obviously a massive third down. He's right at midfield. Gain of seven yards. They may, Darren. They may set this up to, so to see if they can just get this, get about half of this, and then go for it on fourth down. Because of the field position on the field, time in the game, score, yeah. this may be four down territory for this offense. They were not quite at midfield earlier, late in the second quarter, and went for it. Smith being run back all the way near the 20. It has to throw it away again. Now it'll be fourth and eight. So there's a flag out. Yeah, this is going to be intentional grounding. That's a huge loss because that's a spot foul and a loss of down. So that's going to be penalized at the spot. They're going to lose another 18 to 20 yards on this. Well, by the time he threw it, Reggie, he was back at the 25-yard line. Yeah, that's a and the snap was taken from right at midfield to 50. That's, that's a huge penalty. Intentional grounding on the offense. Wow. Well, okay, you talked about it being four down territory. Maybe fourth and eight at the 50, they would still. Right. This is got, go you got to punt the football here. You have to punt it. I think you got to punt the football. Well, it look, the well. Five, back to the 45. Okay. Also down as well. Forgive me. This is high school football, not college or the NFL. That's four not a spot foul. It's just a five yard five. penalty. And the loss of down. All right, so fourth, and you're behind the stick. So you got to punt. Yeah, it looks like Absolutely. they're going to punt it either way. Jamari Smith boots it away, but that's not as bad as it could have been for the field position back. Well, you think about it, right? They were at midfield, and Huff is going to take over about the 35 yard line. So they got 15 yards of field position back.
So we'll look at Jaden Smith, who's had a hand in the defensive performance of this game so far for West Charlotte. A couple of big tackles, around about top 100 recruit in the country, committed to Michigan. Blakeney fakes a handoff, passes and CISO's way. A juke, a jump over a man is brought down in West Charlotte territory. It's a first down and then some. Big play there to get this first down. Nice job by Enciso working through one of the tackles and then works his way for a first down. And I think you'll see this Huff offense will still go with some tempo, but they'll be a little bit more deliberate heading into this fourth quarter. Blake Neat, two backs with him, gives Will Jones, boulders over a defender for a medium gain. It'll go for about seven. Number seven on the tackle for West Charlotte. Gain of seven yards, second down three. Blake Neat's done a really good job much, much of this game. Managing the moment, understanding situations, his poise in the pocket has been really good. Other than the one play where he took a sack, other than that, I thought he's played really, really well so far in this ballgame. Jones in motion up toward the line. Now in CISO, a lot of room initially, he gets to the line to gain. Will Jones to get the ball keep carrier. churning, and he's by for one yard, but there's a flag out early. This might be holding to bring it back. Yeah, it came from the umpire whose job is to pay attention to what goes on down there in what they call the pit, the offensive and defensive line. Justin Wilson, 52, Jakari Mitchell on the last tackle. Gain is to the 38, but again, penalty flag against the Huskies. It is a hold on Huff. the gate, the first down, the second down. And three to go. Although they step it back five more yards to so second and eight. So ten yard penalty makes it back to the 48. Second down nine from there. being given to the offense for the Huskies. Now Blakeney. On second down, Jones doesn't Number get much. Jones carries for the Huskies. Jones drops. Jamari Smith on the tackle. 21 is Jamari Smith. Hop it on Number one leg. As he gets up. Makes his way back to the defensive backfield for West Charlotte. After a gain of two yards. Give him a couple. Third and seven third now. Down seven for the Huskies. I think Huff right now, they're doing two things here. Even if they don't get the first down here on third down, likely, especially if they run the football, this will likely be the last play of this third quarter. Now to 30 seconds to play in the third. Blakeney on the little hitch. It's reeled in by Hampton. And he gets enough for the first down. That's a gain of about eight. And it will move the sticks. At the 38-yard line, pickup of eight yards. First and ten Huskies. Fifteen seconds left in the third, so it looks like they're content to let it go to the fourth. With a new set of downs on the other side. 20 to 7. Huff with a two-score lead. They're up 13 on their home turf on our Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week as we move into the fourth and we quarter. Move to the end of the third quarter of
the fourth quarter we go. Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week action. Huff up 13 on West Charlotte. Looking to give the Lions their first loss of the season with Reggie Walker and Baron Vaughn. Glad you're with us on this big Friday night of football in the greater Charlotte metro area. Huskies got a first down prior to flipping the field and ending the third quarter. I should say that the other way around, ending the third quarter, then flipping the field. <laughs> you know, if nothing else, Reggie, you know me well enough to know I'm going to nitpick myself. You do. You do. <laughs> you're hard on yourself. Whistles. But that's that's why you're great. That's why I'm passing. <laughs> You're one of those 100% one, uh, every day, 100% better than yesterday, right? Yeah, something like that. Try to be 100% better. That's it. Yep. Penalty's on the defense, so this will move it up five yards for Huff. Now first and five. Against the West Charlotte defense. We've had a good one so far. This one might get wacky in the last 12 minutes or so, but be sure to tune in next week, a week from tonight, 7 p.m. kick. Sun Valley undefeated. Sun Valley, the Spartans, to face the Warriors of Weddington. Right here on BayHackerSports.com, our game of the week next week. Blakeney with a handoff. And CISO bounces outside. There's a flag in the backfield. He brushes by defenders and makes his way into the end zone. Touchdown Huff, but it might not stay. Yeah, Trey Blakeney is kind of motioning for his guys to come back, so he knows something that everybody else doesn't. And it is a hold on the Huskies. Otherwise, that was going to be another explosive run play. That would have been 38 yards for the score. Qualifies a 33-yard run. Give me 33 yards after the penalty for the score. So it'll come back. They will step off the penalty yardage. We'll back them up the at 10, so up five with the penalty against West Charlotte. Back 10 with their own penalty. So it is now 15 to gain for the first down. First down, 15 for Huff. You see the game plan running the football. So much of what they've done to run the football has been up inside early in this game. Now you get to the fourth quarter, they bounce it outside. That outside contain is not there because they're so used to those guys running up in between the tackles. Like the hands. This one's Will Jones. He gets tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Will Jones, the ball carrier. Only a gain of one, second and 14 coming up. I think that was partly the down and distance situation. Part of that was let's get the clock moving again because the clock had been stopped, obviously due to the penalty and, and those types of things in the end of the quarter. So this was also about getting that clock winding again. Now on second, it's Jones again. Sprint up the middle. And he'll get quite enough for the first down. 12 yard gain. And again, they go right back to the middle. And they pick up big yardage there. Set themselves up for a very manageable third down. And West Charlotte didn't even get set before the ball was snapped there. And this is going to be a first down. Will Jones, the ball carrier. Huskies convert on third and one, Flags but it well. looks like there's going to be some meeting here. There's a flag yeah, over so near think, the West Charlotte sideline. I, I would imagine, to your point you just made, as that ball was snapped. There might have been 12 out there. Somebody was in the neutral zone. Yeah. So for now, it is a third down conversion. Chains have stayed put. We await a call with 10.48 to play in the fourth quarter. I think it's going to be a first down either way, whether it's via penalty or the result of the actual play. I think this is going to be a first down either way. So you think this, this is going to be against West Charlotte? I think so. Let's see. It is. Yeah, 
illegal substitution, that, that arm across the chest, basically too many men on the field. Penalties against West Charlotte. So here's a first Illegal down. Huskies convert. New spot. Football's been moved at the 13 yard line. First and 10, Huskies. First and ten, not quite close enough for goal to gain. And play clock got down to zero, but Huff seems to have gotten a timeout in first. It's their first of the second half. Timeout charge to the Huskies. And here on the home side, once again, we'd like to encourage you to consider joining the Huff Athletic Early timeouts. Club. Impact with that West Charlotte football team right now still trails. Be sure to tune in right here on BayHackleSports.com, 11 p.m. to the Blitz. Jeff Taylor and the rest of BayHackle Sports crew, the three JTs, and Kelly, as we like to call them, which sounds like a bad sitcom, but I promise it's a good highlights rap show. They offer it every Friday night, 11 p.m. BayHackleSports.com is the spot. Which sounds better, the three JTs and Kelly or Kelly and three JTs? Well, she's got to be first, right? She's a it KB. Right. It it's KB right. and three JTs. It's like any any good band, right? Right, it's, right. It's, it's, KC know. and the Sunshine Band. Right. It's uh, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. There you go. That's it. The JTs, that's the band of people. That's it. So following the timeout, on KB side. So, yeah, no, that's a good correction. Blakeney out of the timeout, fakes the give, dumps it over to Anciso, who gallops into the end zone for the score. Touchdown, Huskies from 13 yards out. Anciso, 13 yards from Trey Blakeney. There is some hesitation. This might not count. And there you see it, a hold against the offense. So that's already two on this series alone. Touchdowns or would have been touchdowns. Take it off the board. Yeah, absolutely. This is a holding ball against Huff. And if you're Huff, you're up two scores. There's a chance that there's some silver lining here if you ultimately do get the touchdown, that it's just running off for a block. Absolutely. But you got that is only the case if you get the touchdown. First down, twenty for the Huskies. And backs it up to the twenty-three yard line. First and twenty for Huff. Blakeney. And off Jones. A couple of cuts outside, and he is grabbed at his ankles by DeQuinder Williams out from that cornerback position. Ball carrier number 11, Will Jones. Williams is such a physical player off that edge at that defensive back position. He comes up, he is not afraid to stick his shoulder pad into somebody's chest and make sure they are on the ground. Gain of four, so now second and 16 from the 19-yard line. Huff, with the way this game has gone, Reg, it feels like a touchdown would put this thing to bed just about. The way their defense has played throughout this game and the, the issues that West Charlotte has had sustaining drives, I think you're absolutely right. Braden Smith, the tackle Will from behind on Will Jones that time. Short gain, it brings up third and long. So a game of a couple of yards. A couple of yards game there, so it'll be third and 14 for the Huskies. They've got to get, they've got to get it down to the three. So there's a chance on a big play. They're short of the end zone, but they're able to get the first.
Blakeney drops back over the middle. Overthrows his target, although he had it there. Brady by a hair, unable to pull it in. That would have been a really, really good catch. That would have been acrobatic, to say the least. That's a good throw. Just a little bit off. That would have been a big-time grab. So now it's fourth down. They'll send out Nolan Hooser for another field goal attempt. He's hit from 52 and 27. This will be a 35-yard attempt from the right hash. And a whistle flags out. Hooser goes through the motion. And Darren, there is a silver lining to this. Even if they get this field goal to go through, field goal to go through. Well, Move it up five for the Huskies. I'm interested to hear your, your theory here. Well, if you're West Charlotte, field goal here makes it 23 to seven. It's still just a two possession game, but you need both two point conversions to stay in this game. So it doesn't extend it to a three possession game with less than nine minutes to go. And who's here? Missing. Wow. Lining it, a 30-yard attempt. That is a rarity. And West Charlotte, I mean, look, a couple of would have been Huff touchdowns negated by penalty. The Lions bailed out there, and the Huskies get zero points out of it. Now it's a two-possession game, and you still only need one extra point to tie the game. Yeah, I see your point. 13-point deficit, much different than a 16, even though it's it's two touchdowns. Well, as you know, the percentages, right, of the two-point conversion being successful are not very high, obviously, comparative to your standard extra point or just in general. This effectively acts as a touchback. 20-yard line, Katie Smith brought down from behind. Eli Anders again off of the edge. That is big time by Anders. Comes off of that defensive left side. Nice bend and explodes off the edge. Gets the sack, and now this West Charlotte team absolutely not only backed up, but on the brink in this game overall from a time and score standpoint, really, really running out of time. Anders the sack and goes for a loss of 10 for the Lions. High snap, Smith pulls it in, gives. And it's a short run, no gains. And the a Lions. very late flag flies. <laughs> I mean, the guys were unpiled there in the flag fly. You see a notebook coming out, Reggie. To me, that typically indicates an unsportsmanlike. Absolutely, absolutely. Because they got to take note of who the player is. It is the case. It's against Huff. That's a 15-yard penalty from the previous So an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Huskies. Again, penalties bailed out West Charlotte by wiping two touchdowns off the board for the Huskies on their last offensive series. And now they pull this one back to a manageable distance for the Lions with a penalty. Got to stay disciplined. Second and situation. five. Gray took the direct snap, coughed it up, and the Huskies come away with the fumble. Anders again. This time making a play with a fumble recovery. Yeah, they just look to go up the middle and puts the football on the ground. You can't score a touchdown without the football. That had started to look like a series of very unfortunate events for Huff. But they flipped the script just like that. Got 
Wow. Now they've got it inside the 25 yard line with another chance to go up three scores. We talked about the red zone issues that this team has had so far this season. Not quite in the red zone here, but you can rest assured Coach Baker wants his guys to be better at getting touchdowns and not settling for more field goals. Told us this week, I said, you, you know, you got a weapon like Hooser. It's not terrible to use it. He goes, yeah, but I love him. Great kid. He kicks the ball well, but I only want to see him kicking extra points. <laughs> yeah. Blakeney after the play fake gives to Anciso. Relentless effort by Julian Carmine. Had him by the ankles. Allows time for some help to come and record the tackle. Number zero is Julian Carmichael, one to put a few. That gets it up to the third and six. It looks like it's going to be a gain of four yards. Third about seven to 21. And Huff is officially at the bleed the clock mindset right now in this ballgame. Yeah, the offense, again, with the penalties taking the one touchdowns off the board, have kind of been messing around, but they have run off a lot of clock, and you're still up two scores. Dossie in motion. Blakeney going deep toward Anciso. Squeezed and then let go by Jamari Smith, so it's incomplete. Now to be fourth down. And I see number 81 coming out to try another field goal. Field goal team on. This one looks to be about a 39 yarder. 39 yard field goal try for Nolan Looser. Missed his last. The hold gets down. Hoosier blasts it off of his right and redeems himself by putting it through for three more. So 23 to 7 the score after Hoosier gets his third field goal with under six to play in the fourth. It's a 16 point lead for the Huff Huskies. Under six minutes to play in the fourth quarter here on our Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. Third field goal knocked through of the night for Nolan Hooser, which means Huff will kick it away to West Charlotte. This kickoff brought to you by Queen City Audio, Video, and Appliances. Hooser equips the mouthpiece this time. On corks on one. It was almost yeah, good. nearly put it through the uprights <laughs> there. <laughs> a touchback for West Charlotte. Yeah, I mean, this is a steep mountain to climb for the Lions. A 16-point deficit, under six to play. It's just 
look, they're a great team. Defense and sort of slugging games out is their M.O. It's tough to play with a deficit with the type of offense that they run. But one thing we do know about West Charlotte, they're gritty. They're going to give this a go. They're not going to stop fighting until that clock has a bunch of zeros on it and the buses are loaded up to go home. This group is going to continue to battle. Scotty Cooper on the pitch. Bates a tackle. It's five yards up the field before being stopped by the Huff defense. And the other thing to point out, unfortunately, for this West Charlotte team, they've only got one more time they can stop the clock. And I can tell you right now, Huff not looking to do them any favors by stopping it poor. One timeout left for West Charlotte. They've had issues getting plays in and getting snaps off. So they've had to call a couple of timeouts to avoid delay of game penalties. Katie Smith spins another pitch. Scotty Cooper's way spins off of his own teammate and gets the first down before pushed out of bounds. First a gain of six. Number two, Scotty Cooper. Number three, Anthony Walker there for the defense to make sure he got out of bounds. Pick up of five yards. Pushed, pushed off of the block being the applied by his teammate Dante Nicholson there enabled him to extend the play and extend the drive. First and 10, low snap, scooped up by Smith. Rolls, jukes to the outside, doesn't get out of bounds before he's hit. Short game, maybe two yards there to make it second and eight. At the 33-yard line. Second and eight. Second down to eight for West Charlotte. Now is the point in this game where you, you need somebody, right? You got to take a, a two-yard throw or a or seven-yard throw or a handoff and just do something individually spectacular to create an explosive play if you want to stay alive in this game. Smith spins. Looked like he was trying to fake a handoff to a defender. No other choice but to run with it. He's bottled up by James Nesta and company. And they may have missed a little bit of a face mask right there in that play. Obviously did not get called, but. And Huff was trying to strip it. They had multiple players looking to rip it out of Katie Smith's hands or punch it out. And see, this is where you got to think about it as a defensive player. I just want the guy on the ground, right? I want the guy on the ground. I want the clock to keep moving. Stripping the football here, giving up extra yards, maybe even an explosive play, the last thing you really want to happen. Now third down, no gain on that carry. Third and eight, Smith airs it out for Davion Jones, but it's overthrown. Samari Matthews on the coverage, just a sophomore. <laughs> that Look, guy. We, don't, we don't call his name a lot. There's good reason There's a, for that. Yeah, you don't it's talk about Samari because nobody's going to test him. That, that's 85% of why his name isn't called is because no one's going to test him. And then in the event that they do like that, that ball better be perfect or there's no chance. And he was in good phase there coverage-wise, no chance to get that one completed. West Charlotte calls a timeout. That is their last with 3.22 to play and trailing by 16. Be sure to tune in every Monday night, 7 p.m. here on BayHackleSports.com. Game on from our BayHackle Sports crew. Look, we know you're watching football coverage on BayHackleSports.com. Did you know we tackle volleyball, we tackle boys and girls soccer, we tackle it all. So Jeff Taylor and the crew will catch you up to speed on what's going on in other sports in this fall season around the area on Game On Mondays at 7 p.m. Are you going to be there this week? You almost threw me off. Man. No, you're going to be there this week. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me this time. That's you. I got to test you, big fella. Keep me on my toes. For those unaware, Darren is the bigger of the two of us from a muscle muscle standpoint in this, uh, Stop in this booth. <laughs> He tells me all the time. He gives me the shoulder bump, and he looks at me, and he goes, weight room, and I just got to accept it. <laughs> Fourth down. West Charlotte's going for it. Katie Smith 
Gets it away, finds Dante Nicholson, who's across for the first down near midfield. What a play drawn up by the Lions. Yeah, great job, and Katie Smith did an even better job allowing and continuing to drift and let the pressure get there so he could throw it over his guys, head, those guys' head to his guys and let that offensive line lead them down the field. Good job by Huff on the back, and they give up the first down but they made sure to keep it in bounds on the tackle to let this clock continue to run. And Katie Smith, whenever he makes a play like that, he's just got a way of contorting his body. It, the throw was on the money, but it felt like he was running backwards and looking in the opposite direction. Yeah, his body control is exquisite. Fakes the pitch, rush coming, finds Dante Nicholson again, but it'll go for no gain. Pass complete to number 19, Dante Nicholson. Number three, Anthony Walker makes the tackle for the Huskies at the 47 yard line. And that's that's and the key right now for Huff, right? Whatever happens, complete passes, whatever, you want immediate tackles. It's a defense, Reggie, that just swarms to the football. Even with the athletes West Charlotte has, not really been able to break the big one because of it. Direct snap, and that one's bottled up. James Nesta right there as the masthead of the defense. We haven't talked about Nesta much tonight. And it's not for his lack of being effective. It's just so many other guys have made plays, and Nesta's created some pressures but other guys have been the ones to finish those plays. So that's part of his package as well, affecting the game in so many ways, but not necessarily always affecting it by him making the tackle. He's have a sack on his own, a share of another. Now Katie Smith, there's one out deep, and it was almost picked off. Could have been, probably should have been. Yeah, that's Samari Matthews. And he is, he had a room service pick there and was unable to bring that thing in. He will not be able to sleep at night over that one. Makes it fourth down. And West Charlotte with no other choice but to go for it again. Down 16 with a minute and 11 seconds to go. What a start to the season as we are now past midway through the season for the Lions. 6-0 entering tonight. Both of these programs, right? We, we saw them both the first weekend of the season. And you had you, you knew that both of them had a chance to be really, really good. And we're seeing it so far. Big hit. And the pass drops incomplete. To turn it over on downs and wrap it up. No timeouts for West Charlotte. So all Huff has to do is let the clock run to zero. Nice punctuation there. Aiden Bell with the hit. As another look at the standings, Huff will move to 4-0 and in the conference with Charlotte. It's their first loss of the season. They dropped to 6-1, and 3-1 and in the standings. And Huff, the Huskies, you said it. We saw them. Week one against Burns, that primetime loss against the state championship contender of South Carolina. Perennial state championship contender. And the Huskies, this is their, will be in a minute and five seconds of game time, their sixth consecutive win. Following that up, Trey Blakey takes a knee. Once again, the marching Huskies and will need to do that one more time to close out the victory. All right, Reg, your impressions, man. We this is a Huff around. team that kind of feels like it's, even though it's top five and a lot of the area rankings, a little bit slept on because of that week one loss. How good can they be? Well, I think they're also a little bit slept on because the, that some of the scores haven't been as lopsided as people expect sometimes. But... This defense is a championship-level defense. The offense just has to get them 20-plus points on any given night, and this defense will have them in the football game. This was an incredibly uh, impressive performance. 
to do this to the athleticism of this West Charlotte football team, uh, it speaks volumes of how good of a football team Huff is. And, and on the other side for West Charlotte, look, you, you, you run into a team that has a really good, big physical defense. You weren't able to, to put enough points on the board tonight, but certainly you improved. An impressive victory for Huff, 23 to seven, the final here from Huff High School. So, for Brady Pugh directing, Mike Moore producing, Reggie Walker, the rest of our fantastic Bay Hackle, Bay Hackle Sports crew. I'm Darren Vaught saying so long. Thanks for joining us again. Huff gets the victory over West Charlotte, 23 to seven.